Good afternoon. I wish very much I was in Florence with you, but I'm speaking in the morning from New York. Um, today I'm going to talk about a cross-cultural interdisciplinary framework to study the relationships between architecture and sound, specifically sacred spaces and sacred music. I'll start with an overview of the project and describe our methodology. Then I'll introduce our current and ongoing studies in Florence and Rome and conclude with our plans for where we go from here. Like the Cantoria project, which incorporates musicology, art, and ecclesiastical history, we seek to foster a research community to produce cross-cultural studies in which architectural acoustics serves as the basis for focusing on issues of sonic ritual, musical style, and performance practices. Beyond this, we seek to understand the perceptual and cognitive effects of architectural acoustics in general and in the interactions of sound and space in sensing the unfathomable. Resonance, reflection, and decay filter a sound, rendering it into an object that could be beautiful or irritating, transcendent or disconcerting. The delicate and shifting balances between acoustical clarity and intentional sonic blur reflect divergent tastes, varying religious priorities, and involving as evolving aesthetic ideals of particular cultures and subcultures. Performance practices affecting the transmission and reception of music change in tandem with architectural modifications. In some instances, such as during the design of Chiesa del Gesù in Rome in the 1560s, the contentious issue of desirable acoustics was articulated in documented debates between clergy and patron regarding whether to create a flat or vaulted ceiling. The breadth of our current work ranges from indigenous sites in the southern United States, specifically Mesa Prieta, an area of acoustically rich caves and echoing topographies with thousands of petroglyphs and other archaeological evidence of ritual dating from the archaic ancestral Pueblo and Spanish periods. To an acoustic study of Andean tent houses based on the layout of our and architectural details of these ritual spaces for listening to test for purposeful acoustic design, both within and outside these structures. We're investigating Byzantine, Crusader, Gothic, Renaissance, and Baroque churches in Europe and the Levant. In a letter from about 1600, addressed to an unnamed prince, presumably Francesco de' Medici, the Florentine musician Luigi Zenobi lists the characteristics of a good musician. Among these, he cites the importance that singers consider the differences between singing in a church, in a room, and out of doors. This recognition of the necessity to adapt to distinct acoustic contrast between church and chamber demands the performer's consideration of acoustic balance in melodic and harmonic intervals, voicing, tempo, and the distance between and placement of singers. Decades prior to Zenobia's letter, the theorist and composer Niccolo Vincentino, notable for his pioneering explorations of intonation and his discussions of the importance of dynamics in performance practices, described the difficulty of coordinating multiple choirs in a church. Here, he inferred problems of masking, blending, and balance as related to the nature of the church and the distances between the singers, and he noted the benefits of proximate placement of vocalists for achieving desir desirable intonation. The reverberant qualities of a performance space are defined by the building's internal boundaries and geometries. These qualities, whether consciously or subconsciously, profoundly influence music produ production and perception. This influence can often be inferred by performers' decisions regarding tempo, timbre, articulation, choices of embellishments, and they're perceptible in terms of clarity, comprehensibility, balance, and other dimensions of performance. Given the enormous role architecture plays on sound, it is remarkable that there are relatively few specific studies of this relationship. Moreover, relatively little has been studied regarding the specific role of architecture on compositional style and practices. Even more rare, is documentation of the role musical sound may have played in the architectural design of a structure. 
Accounting ledgers and other archival documents attest to the number and types of musicians employed in churches. However, numerous questions regarding performance practices remain unanswered. Where and how were musicians distributed in this place? In this space, how were they situated? What were the acoustical effects of architectural changes and enhancements? Interior furnishings, tapestries, etc. To study these issues, we have established a methodological process comprised of gathering source materials, architectural drawings, and manuscripts from archives, consulting archival documents regarding payments to musicians, purchases of instruments, and musical practices. With these, we hope to determine, to the best no available knowledge, the architectural and musical history of a site. We next measure and map the space using laser, laser and LIDAR scans and photogrammetry to create a detailed 3D model. We then record impulse responses and sine wave sweeps. With the acquired data, we can create virtual acoustic oralizations by convolving the processed impulse responses with the sound of an input signal. Here, for example, is one of the impulse responses recorded in the Duomo. When convolved with this dry recording, this is all. it produces this oralization. This is Moreover, we can simulate the acoustics of a modeled structure in a virtual acoustic space. This simulation can be implemented and installed in any relatively dry room. Simulation, simulating a real-time interactive acoustical environment allows performers and listeners to freely engage with the virtual acoustic space, allowing for performances of works in virtual acoustic settings. Be beyond a new perspective on historically informed performance practices, replicating the acoustics of a given space in a controlled laboratory environment allows for a wide range of perception studies, including behavioral and neuroimaging studies. The method for augmenting the, an acoustic space uses microphones in the room to capture sound sources. The recorded output is processed in a canceller, removing the, the synthetic reverberation. Doing so pr gives, precisely control, gives precise control over the oralization while suppressing feedback. It also allows freedom of movement and creates a more natural and acoustic environment for performers or listeners. Our initial studies in Western sacred musical spaces include churches in Rome, Mantua, and Florence. Although our project in Florence was severely impacted by the pandemic, we were able to return last summer and have commenced initial studies of three churches in Florence, including the Romanesque Abbey of San Mignato al Monte, whose construction com commenced in the late 11th century and whose choir is raised upon the crypt, in which to this day vespers are chanted. Santa Maria del Fiore, whose completion in 1436 with Brunelleschi's mon monumental dome crowning the Gothic architecture heralded a rich corpus of music, and the Renaissance Basilica de San Lorenzo. Here again is an impulse response, well here is an impulse response from San Lorenzo. Compared to the impulse response from the Duomo. Although not composed specifically to be sung in these churches, here is a short section of a work by Felice and Felice Enerio. First, the original near anechoic recording. This is response of San Lorenzo.
And finally, with the impulse response of the Duomo. One perhaps overzealous objective of ours is to study musical works written by composers affiliated both with San Lorenzo and with the Duomo, with the goal of trying to determine based on the acoustical characteristics of each of the churches, whether a given work was originally more likely conceived to be performed in one rather than the other church. We are currently collaborating with Gabriel Giacomelli from the Duomo in, co in correspondence with Monsignor Timothy Verdon, a musicologist, Edmund Strain-Champs, and Timothy Carter, to find optimal exemplars for this study. I next describe one of our studies in Rome, the Chiesa di San Aniceto in Palazzo Altens, a small church constructed in 1604 and consecrated in 1614. The archives of the museum at Palazzo Altems contains a codex of music. Many pieces, many pieces within were composed specifically for performance in Sant'Anacetto. The codex, titled Va Varia Musica Sacra, comprises part books of a large number of works by many of Rome's most notable composers of the period, including Palestrina, who had died earlier, Catalani, Nanino, Giovanelli, and most predominantly, Fenice and Nerio. A functioning capella by 1605, Altemps employed Felice Anerio and Ottavio Catalani as house musicians. The church was remodeled twice during Altemps' life, first in 1609 when he transformed the capella into a larger church, and again in 1614 when Altemps remodeled the church to house the, sc house the skull of Santa Anicetta. The architectural features of the church create an extraordinary acoustic environment with rich yet clear sound. Were we to hear music in the church today, it would sound almost identical to how it would have sounded in 1614. In addition to, to commissioning and collecting music, Duke Alt Altemps was himself a skilled amateur composer whose work was included in the codex. Having overseen every stage of its construction, Duke Altemps undoubtedly knew the acoustical properties of the church. We conjecture that the sonic qualities of San Aniceto influenced either cons consciously or subconsciously many of the compositions included in the codices. Following our research methodology, in order to substantiate this conjecture, we first select the works from the codex to be transcribed and then record selections in near uh, anechoic conditions. To our knowledge, these works had not been performed since the early 17th century. Next, we, record, we recorded impulse responses and sign sweeps in the church and created oralizations. Finally, we measured and modeled the acoustics of a contemporaneous church in Rome so that we could compare the acoustic qualities of these churches. We will summarize each stage of this pro process. The manuscripts are in part books. Deciphering and aligning the indi individual parts we transcribed the works and created a critical edition in score. The edition was recently published by Sedim. We next recorded the music in a near anechoic conditions. The performers were the early music ensemble Stile Galant, conducted by Stefano Ressi. Here is an example. <laughs>
another example from the Codex, a solo section from Felicia Anerio's Misericordia Domini, recorded in near anechoic conditions. <laughs> Another example from the Codex, a solo selection from Felicia Nerio's Misericordia Domini, recorded again in near anechoic conditions. <laughs> responses of, of San Aniceto using balloon pop bursts and a six-second all-pass chirp, played from studio monitor and recorded using two tetrahedral microphone arrays. The balloons were popped and the speaker was positioned in places where singers were likely to have been located, seen here by the yellow cylinders. And the microphones, here seen in, with green triangles, were placed in two listening positions along the apse. These spatial impulse responses form a from a variety of locations allow us to make sophisticated models and analyses of the church's acoustics. With these measurements, we created a convolution filter that allowed us to uh, oralize the music of the virtual acoustics of San Aniceto. Here is the same excerpt from Anerio's Misericordia, processed with the acoustic model of San Aniceto. <laughs> acoustics, we measured impulse responses of a contemporaneous, contemporaneous Roman church, the Chiesa del Gesù, the mother church of the Jesuit order, whose principal aim was to reach the congregation through preaching. Del Gesù's single nave gave parishioners visual and oral connection with the priest. The barrel vault and dome are visually imposing, a feature desired by the benefactor Farnese. Together with the side chapels, the acoustical complexity and decay time of roughly nine seconds was considered a deficit by the church, Jesuit clergy. Here is Duke Autem's setting of Tota Pucra S for two tenors and organ continuo. The thin texture and relatively low register make this an acoustically challenging piece in a highly reverberant environment. Here is how the, the work would sound in Chiesa del Gesù. <laughs>
compare the blurred acoustics with this rendition um, in this version, which is how it would sound in San Amichetto. <laughs> Acoustical differences are evident by comparing the decay times of Del Gesù to those of San Aniceto. In particular, consider the adjacent semitones in this example in San Aniceto. <laughs> excerpts from the Altemps Codex prior to taking acoustic measurements in San Aniceto, we played these rec recordings from speakers placed in the Cantoria in order to get an approximate impression of the validity of our model. In addition to informally validating our subsequent oralizations, we also wanted to record the sound from two additional locations in the church, one in a, an acoustic hole in the church's ceiling, which is accessible from a trap door in the palazzo's upper floor, presumably with the purpose of being a camera segreto of sorts, the second from a corretto in the rear. Using the real-time virtual acoustic paradigm described earlier, we created a remarkably close approximation of the acoustics of San Aniceto in a small studio at Stanford. Here is a student chorus performing a movement of Aneria's Misericordia, effectively hearing themselves in the church. Visita Continuing study of the effects of reverberation on performance practices, we had the students perform the same work with varying oralizations. <laughs> Dry, now as in all temps. <laughs> as if all temps is twice the volume. <laughs> to summarize, the acoustical characteristics of an architectural structure plays a role in shaping how music is written, performed, and perceived. 
In most cases, composers seem to hold an idealized acoustical environment for the music they write. In some cases, knowledge of the venue affects how the music is conceived. In rare cases, as in that of Chiesa Santa Machetto, not only was music composed with the architecture of the space in mind, but the architecture seems to have been designed with some consideration of the music to be created for it. As our research proceeds, we will further delve into questions of performance practices with consideration of architectural parameters. We will continue to refine our oralization processes and presentations and broaden our research in aspects of perception and cognition of acoustical spaces. And we will integrate visual components into our research by incorporating virtual reality. Finally, I, although I would love to be in Florence with you, I want to invite you all to attend our upcoming hybrid conference in May at Stanford University. Thank you, and thank you for listening.